What if the biggest threat to American air power dominance isn't a stealth giant from Russia or China? What if the aircraft that truly keeps Pentagon planners awake at night is a small, unassuming jet from a nation known for neutrality and furniture? The Saab JS-39 Gripen doesn't have the massive radar cross-section of an F-15, nor the trillion-dollar price tag of the F-35 program, but behind closed doors, U.S. defense contractors and military analysts are paying very close attention. It's not because the Gripen can outstealth an F-35, it's because the Gripen challenges the very philosophy of modern air warfare. Today, we're breaking down what really scares the Pentagon about Sweden's fighter offer and why this jet represents a dangerous alternative to the American way of war. The philosophy of good enough. Let's be clear, the Pentagon isn't afraid of a dogfight. In a one-on-one, -on -one, high-altitude engagement, the U.S. still holds the cards. The real fear is structural and economic. The American model of air power is built on centralized dominance, massive air bases, complex logistics, and astronomical costs. Sweden's model is the exact opposite. The Gripen was designed for total defense, the idea that if your main air bases are cratered in the first hour of a war, you don't stop fighting. The Gripen can land on public highways, be serviced by a handful of mechanics, and be back in the air in 10 minutes. It's built for a war of survival, not just a war of projection. This distributed model of air power is a direct challenge to the expensive, infrastructure-heavy U.S. system. The economic red flag. Here is the comparison no one in Washington likes to talk about, the cost. The Gripen's operating cost per flight hour is a fraction of its Western rivals. For a mid-sized nation like Canada, Finland, or Thailand, this creates a dangerous narrative. If a jet that costs $10,000 an hour can perform 90% of the missions of a jet that costs $35,000 an hour, why pay the premium? The Pentagon worries that the Gripen sells more than just wings and engines. It sells questions. It makes allies wonder if they truly need the extreme complexity of U.S. fifth-generation programs. Every Gripen sold is a blow to the F-35 ecosystem that the U.S. uses to maintain industrial and political influence over its allies. Sovereignty versus Dependency then there's the issue of control. When a country buys an American fighter, they aren't just buying a plane. They are entering a decades-long marriage with U.S. logistics and software. Swab, however, often offers something the U.S. won't, full technology transfer. They allow countries to build the jets locally, write their own software code, and integrate their own weapons. For the Pentagon, this is a strategic red flag. Influence in the modern world is maintained through black boxes, proprietary tech that allies can't fix or change without permission. By offering sovereignty, Sweden undermines the tether that keeps allied air forces tied to Washington. The stealth myth. Critics often point out that the Gripen isn't a true stealth aircraft, but the Pentagon knows that stealth is a moving target. As sensors and infrared tracking improve, the invisible shape of an aircraft becomes less important than its electronic warfare suite. The Gripen E carries one of the most advanced digital electronic warfare systems in the world. It doesn't try to be invisible, it tries to be untouchable by jamming and deceiving enemy sensors. The fear in the Pentagon is that the Gripen proves stealth isn't the only way to survive. If a non-stealth jet can use smart EW and dispersed operations to stay alive, the trillion-dollar investment in stealth shapes starts to look a lot less like a monopoly. The pilot factor and readiness. There's an old saying in aviation, the most dangerous part of the plane is the pilot. Because the Gripen is so much cheaper to fly, pilots in Gripen-equipped air forces can often afford to fly more training hours than those in more expensive fleets. A highly trained pilot in a good jet will almost always beat a rusty pilot in a perfect jet. This is the readiness gap. 
The Pentagon watches the Gripen because it represents a high readiness force. It's a reminder that air superiority isn't just about what you have on paper, it's about what you can actually get into the air when the sirens go off. The NATO Dilemma as Sweden joins NATO, this dynamic becomes even more complex. The alliance values standardization, and for years, that has meant buy American. But the Gripen offers a different path for NATO's smaller members, one that focuses on resilience over prestige. The Gripen factor forces NATO to confront a difficult truth. Is the alliance stronger with a few high-tech silver bullets or a massive swarm on affordable, distributed fighters? A better way of thinking. The Pentagon doesn't fear the Gripen because it's an unbeatable superweapon. They fear it because it is a practical weapon. It proves that smart design, realistic doctrine, and national independence can challenge the most powerful military-industrial complex in history. In the end, the most dangerous thing about Sweden's quiet fighter isn't its missiles or its speed. It's the idea that there might be a better way to think about air power. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown of the Gripen Factor, don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of modern warfare. We'll see you in the next one.